What is going on everyone? Welcome to episode one of my introduction to Java programming tutorial series. Uh, this series is going to be the complete basics of Java. Uh, you, I, I'm assuming most of you don't have any Java or any programming experience at all. Uh, if you do, if you're like an intermediate uh, Java programmer, uh, this might be a little bit too basic for you because we're just gonna go into the real basic uh, variables, functions, you know, all the basic syntax. So. If you have any experience at all, I would wait for my later uh, episodes of this when I go maybe into like the Java FX, which is like the the packages for making applications. But right now we're just going to be doing basic command line stuff and uh, later on we'll get into some more complicated stuff. So uh, in today's episode, we're going to make the most basic uh, program that you can make in any any programming language. Uh, this is the Hello World program. Uh, really, any textbook that you would get in any language, pretty much the first chapter will be on this type of a program that just prints out Hello World to the command line. Uh, it's really just a test to see if you if you installed Java or whatever programming language you're using correctly, if your IDE is working, which the IDE is, what in this case, I'm using NetBeans. It's just the editor for your, for your code. Uh, in this series, I'm not going to install NetBeans because uh, there's already a ton of really good tutorials out there. So I'm just going to link one in the description. So before you watch this, make sure everything is working all right uh, by following the, the tutorial I link and then come back here and we'll get started. So I'm assuming you have already everything already done uh, right now. So let's let's go ahead and get started. So first thing you want to do is you, when you open it up, it's going to look something like this. Uh, it's probably going to have a tab that kind of welcomes you to the to the program. You could just go up to the top of the tab and press on the X. Uh, I don't have it open because I've used NetBeans before and I just kind of got rid of that in the settings. Uh, but once you get a screen like this, the first thing you got to do is you got to make a, a new project. So we're going to come up here to File, New Project, or you could have just clicked on on there. So we're going to make a Java program. See. Uh, you installed the version of NetBeans that uses pretty much all of these. There's there's a whole bunch of options. I'm sure when you installed it, you saw uh, all the different options for the different versions of NetBeans. Uh, some might not have C, some might not have uh, PHP, uh, but I'm hoping you have the one with Java at least. Uh, if you follow my tutorial that I linked, this this would be uh, you should have Java. So we're going to click on Java. We're going to click on Java application and hit next. Then we're going to have this screen here where we're going to name our project and where we want to put it. Uh, I just keep it on documents uh, and it already makes a, a folder with all your NetBeans uh, projects in there. So I'm going to name this Java Tutorials. Okay, and then you can hit finish. And by the way, you don't need to be using NetBeans. You could use really whatever you want, uh, whatever IDE you want to use. Uh, there's Eclipse, there's BlueJay. You can make one make a program in a notepad and just run it through the command line. But using an ID makes it a lot easier because right down here where it says output, it will output what you would uh, see in the command line, just writing the same program. So you don't have to worry about typing any commands into the command line to run your program. So here you go. This is what it looks like when you first make your new project. Right on, on the right here, you have the projects tab, which if you have multiple projects, they will all appear basically one after another like this. And if you hit the little plus, it'll open up the file structure. So you got all your source packages, and then inside this folder, you got your source packages. We only have the one here. I have Java Tutorials, that's the one it made for me, and the Java class Java Tutorials that it also made for me. Um, I'm just gonna delete this whole class, and I'm gonna restart from scratch, just, just in case you're using an IDE that doesn't make this for you. Uh, so here we go. So let's delete that. So uh, I'm just going to put the package Java, uh, what's it called, tutorials. That doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to keep it anyway. And that's basically whatever your package name right here is, which is just going to be your project name. That's what you're going to put here. So it's going to be package and then the package name followed by a semicolon. And a semicolon is pretty much the, uh, the signal to Java that that's the end of the line, that this is just going to be one command. It's just saying, the, this is the package that it's in, end of command, because it doesn't care about your 
about your um, spaces or you could put this on a new line, it'll still work fine. It, it'll, it'll read up to the, to the semicolon here and then it'll stop and go to the next command. So, I mean, that, that's really only for like, say I have a really long line here that's gonna go off the screen. You could just kind of, you know, hit a new line and just keep everything in the, in the same field of view. So there's that. All right, so the next thing we need is we need to open up the class. So every Java file, every Java program, uh, any .java file is gonna have um, a bunch of blocks of code and they're pretty much gonna be in like a tree almost. So you're first gonna open up the, the file by saying public class Java tutorials, oops, tutorials. Okay, and then open parentheses, enter, it's gonna close the parentheses for me automatically, but if not, you just wanna put a closed parentheses just so you don't forget. So every single Java file is gonna be in these blocks of code here. So I have this block right here, and I could even put another class if I wanted to down here and make make another name, but the class name, it has to, when you open up the file, open up the class, I guess, uh, it has to be the same name as the file itself. So if I, ch if I go into my Windows Explorer here and I change the name of this file from Java tutorials.java to uh, Java tutorials 2.java, then it's gonna give me an error here saying, we can't find Java tutorials.java, where is it? I would have to go here and I would have to say two. See, now that I add the two, it, um, it's saying, where is, where is Java 2, Java tutorials 2.java? So I just gotta make sure it's the exact same as the file, and as long as you don't change the file, um, it should be this right here, okay? Um, so the next thing we gotta do is we have to open up the main function. So the functions, Java's made up of functions, like any programming language, it's just anything that your computer does, it's just a bunch of functions running. Um, and what Java needs is it needs a main function that's gonna call all the other functions. So when this file first opens up, when you say you wanna run this, it's gonna look for the main function to see what it's gonna do next. So to do that, to, to make the main function, we gotta say public static void main. So I'm just gonna write the whole thing out and then explain everything after. And then uh, in the you open up parentheses, it'll automatically close them if you're using NetBeans or pretty much any other ID. Uh, and then inside the parentheses, you say string bracket bracket arcs. Okay, and then open and close curly braces. So here we go. So like I was saying, we got our blocks of code. So we have the class and inside this block here, we have our method, which is in this block. And then we could have also other methods if we wanted to underneath here, All right? So here's basically what we're doing. We got public, which is saying that this method here, just like the class is viewable by any outside methods that are calling it, which in this case, uh, it's gonna be the, the Java virtual machine. So Java, it runs on top of your system. This is a little bit more complicated than I wanna get into in this series, but you know, just for the sake of, of anyone interested. Uh, Java basically has a virtual computer that runs on top of your actual computer so that really any computer could run the same files without any conflicts. So like a, a language like C or C++ uh, is going to run just on your computer. The code's gonna be made just for your processor and it's gonna to have to be recompiled on another computer to work on that one. But the same code, it can be compiled on this computer, transferred over to another computer and run the same exact way. That's why you have to download the Java JDK or uh, you know, you always have these pop-ups down here saying update Java. That's because you need to update the virtual machine that all these programs are gonna run on. So public means it's public to the Java virtual machine. Then we got static. Static basically, uh, we're gonna get into this later on, but uh, uh, Java is a language made up of objects. And uh, an object basically is just a block of code that uh, has a bunch of variables on the inside of it um, yeah, I'll get more into this, but if I took away the static, that would make that, that would make this method right here, a method that only runs with the object Java tutorials. Now, uh, it sounds a little bit confusing, but we'll, we'll get to that at some point, but just for now, just, uh, have the static. You just need it for the main method. 
Um, you just need it. We'll, we'll, I'll explain this later on. All right, so after static, we have void. Now, void means this, this for any uh, method, you have to have a return type for the method. What is a return type? A return type is basically um, what, the me what the method's gonna, it's basically a method is gonna do something, like say a method's gonna add two numbers together. And then you want to return the answer to the calling method. So let's, let's say I have a method down here, public int add, okay? Uh, I don't know, maybe if I, this might confuse some of you, but uh, uh, it's okay. Uh, so ho hopefully I'll uh, explain things. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say uh, int sum equals two plus two, right? Then we wanna return the sum back up to here. So we just say int answer equals add. So now it's going to run this method. Oh, what's the problem here? Oh, it has to be static. Again, we'll get, we'll get into static later. Uh, but basically, it's going to run this method, and then whatever, it's, whatever is returned here is going to go into this variable. But we'll get into that later on, like I said, with uh, all that other stuff with static. A little bit too complicated. I probably shouldn't have even said that. Uh, but yeah, anyway, so void means it's not going to return anything because there's nothing to return it to. All right, and then main. Main is just the name of the function. Um, this is the main function, so that's why it's called main. All right, and then in the parentheses, we got string bracket bracket args. Now, a string is basically just words, like a sentence. We'll get into strings the next, in the next episode, but uh, basically what this line here is, is saying is that this method may have some variables that come in from the command line. Uh, for, for the most part, you won't have any variables coming in from the command line, or at least not that you know of. Um, so that's, I'll just leave it at that. You just need it. This, if you want to make a main method, this is what you need right here. Just exactly like that. Just memorize it. You know, right now I can, I could say that in my sleep. You know, it's, it's just something that you have to know if you want to be a Java programmer. Just public static void main string bracket bracket arcs. All right, so now we're finally gonna do something. So inside of this method, we wanna print out hello world to the command line, which is gonna be right down here. So how are we gonna do that? The Java has the system library, which will help us do that. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say system dot out, which so we're gonna print it out to the command line, dot print ln, which you know, a lot of people just say line it's going to print a line onto the command line. So, and then we open close parentheses and then a semicolon to end the line. So we don't need semicolons after methods. Forgot to mention that. We need to need only after uh, just lines of code, not blocks of code. You know, the method has their blocks, the curly braces, a line of code ends with the semicolon. All right, so system out print line. So right now, what is this gonna do? This is gonna print a blank line because we need to supply some methods inside the parentheses here. So we could open uh, quotes. It's gonna automatically put the close quote after. And we could say whatever we want here. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna say, hello world. And there you go. So remember Java or any programming language, most, most programming languages at least, are case sensitive. So it, when you say system, it has to be a capital S. It has to be a lowercase O. It has to be a lowercase P. And then in here, there's, you know, the. it doesn't matter what case this is. It doesn't matter what symbols you put in. Uh, Java will just print out what's ever inside of these quotes. All right, so now we can run this. So we can go up here to the play sign, or we could go up to run, run project. All right, so we're going to run it. And down here, here we go. Hello world printout. There you go. There's your first program in Java. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully I didn't make this too complicated. Uh, but uh, next time we'll talk about variables and uh, we'll get into some more, slightly more complicated stuff. So thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Goodbye.